Good evening and welcome to Tacoma's 2022 State of the City. Stronger, many voices, one community. My name is Kevin B. Dahl. As a lifelong Pierce County resident, I've enjoyed contributing to the community as the past chair of the Tacoma Pierce County Chamber of Commerce and as a current volunteer on UW Tacoma's Milgard School of Business Executive Council and the Institute for Innovation and Global Engagement Advisory Board. Tonight, I am pleased to join you as one of this evening's MCs, and I will be joined by Tara Ryan, the chair of the Mayor's Youth Commission of Tacoma. Thanks to all of you joining us from home and to the small group who were able to join us in person in the council chambers to hear about the state of our city from Mayor Victoria Woodards and to explore solutions to make our city even stronger together. It is now my pleasure to introduce the choir from the Congregational Christian Church for American Samoa for singing the national anthem. Thank you to the choir from the Congregational Christian Church of American Samoa, and thank you, Kevin, for introducing me earlier. My name is Tara Ryan, and I am happy to join you tonight as the chair of the Mayor's Youth Commission of Tacoma. My three years serving on the commission has taught me an incredible amount about the power of the people. The young people of Tacoma, who I call my community, have incredible wisdom that make Tacoma stronger. Should people take the time to invest and to listen? Tonight's theme is a powerful one. And I believe we can all agree that making our community stronger requires all of us. I think I can speak for the youth of Tacoma that Mayor Woodard's collaborative leadership style truly embraces tonight's theme of many voices, one community. Join me now as we hear from and acknowledge members of the Puyallup Tribe of Indians. We gratefully honor and acknowledge that we rest on the traditional homelands of the Puyallup tribe. The Puyallup people have lived on and stewarded these lands since the beginning of time and continue to live here today. They live, work, raise their children, take care of their community, practice their traditional ways, and speak the Lashootse language just as their ancestors did. The City of Tacoma recognizes that this land acknowledgement is just one small step towards true allyship, and we commit to uplifting the voices, experiences, and histories of the indigenous people of this land today and for futures to come.
My name is Slu Peichel, Cedar Moan woman, Connie McLeod. I am a Puyallup tribal elder and the cultural director for the Puyallup tribe. We are standing here on the traditional lands of our Puyallup people. One of our largest villages was here along these waterways. Our people would have lived their everyday lives here. So I want to welcome you to this place that our people have always lived. Our creation stories tell us of a time of a great flood. Our people then gathered their belongings and put them in our canoes and we traveled to the top of our sacred mountain. And there we stayed until the waters began to recede. And we developed these villages along these waterways, along what now is our sacred river here into the sound. We welcome people that come from thousands of miles away to be gathered in potlatch times, gather in ceremony, and sometimes even gather to share everyday life. So today, I'm just gonna offer a prayer that says, that honors our ancestors that have welcomed us here today. Sapa and Kaya, grandmother and grandfather, pray and give thanks for today that we could be here at the sacred place. We could be here at our sacred water so that our people, our ancestors would know that we're still here today, living everyday lives on these sacred places. So we welcome you to this gathering at this time where our people have always been. Our grandmothers and grandfathers are thankful that you could be here today, thankful that we have this opportunity to share this land, this place, our water, our sacred mountain. We all live together. We all share responsibility, not only to take care of one another, but also to take care of this land, this earth, this gathering place. So we welcome you again to this place of our people, this place of generosity, this place that we live in today. All my relations, all my siatya. Thank you to Connie McLeod for those beautiful words of blessing for this event and our city. Tonight, we will hear from Mayor Woodards on topics of affordable housing, homelessness, public safety, and recovering from the global health and economic crisis, and how we can and will make Tacoma stronger together. We will begin the program with an original poem, Can Be, Will Be, from Tacoma's own Port Laureate, Lydia K. Valentine. Please join me for her words of inspiration. Many voices can be chaos, a cacophony of a non-collective collection. Corporate sound bites covering over the concerns of common citizens who are mired in the daily muck of making ends meet, seeking safe shelter, stumbling through obstacle-filled systems meant to help, and simply staying alive. Many voices can be misheard, mistaken, meandering musings masking intent, intense, intolerable, intolerant. Intangible ideology instead of inclusive action inviting integrity and integrative practices. Many voices layer in lotus-like harmony, lifting each other at the root leaving space for liminal light, for listening and listening and listening even more, for laughter and for love. Many voices can be grace-filled and grace-fueled communion, collective care and collaborative creativity, all coming together to work conscientiously, to make mistakes and fix mistakes, to build and become and believe we are one community.
And now, for everyone in attendance and watching at home, I'm pleased to introduce to you Mayor Victoria Woodards as she presents this year's State of the City Address, Stronger, Many Voices, One Community. Mayor Woodards. Good evening, and thank you for joining me for the 2022 annual State of the City Address. I hope you will join me in sharing our appreciation for Poet Laureate Lydia K. Valentine for opening this event with a very impactful piece entitled, Can Be, Will Be. I also want to thank tonight's co-MCs, Kevin B. Dole, who for years of leader, for his years of leadership in the business and healthcare community, and for his passion for developing the potential of people and organizations. And to Tara Ryan, the chair of the Mayor's Youth Commission of Tacoma, one of our founding members. The commission amplifies youth voices and connects with elected leaders on important decisions. Now I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about how I got here this evening. And I don't mean how I drove here. I mean how I'm physically standing here. And I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize my mother, Valerie Kaluna, who is here this evening. Mom, I just thank you so much for your continued love and support of me, no matter how difficult I can be sometimes. I love you. <laughs> and I must. I have to thank the late Harold G. Moss, my mentor and my father, the shoulders of which I stand on. And I am so grateful for the, for the path he, he blazed for young people like me. Although I'm probably not that young anymore, but when I was younger, he blazed it. Um, but just so grateful for, just for his kindness and the way that he took me in as his daughter and taught me all of the things I now know today. Last year's address was presented in four conversations with our partners in transforming our community, our economy, our neighborhoods, and our future destiny together. Tonight, as I return to a more traditional address, I have to acknowledge that reflecting on what is happening in the city of Tacoma at this time is extremely challenging. We as a city are being confronted by a multitude of very urgent challenges. And tonight, I will speak candidly about the issues facing us and our path forward. I will also share why I believe we are stronger thanks to the many voices and varied contributions that each of us makes to our one community. And I'll also talk about how we will emerge stronger than ever. In addition to the many diverse voices that make up our city of destiny, I want to acknowledge a few specific leaders that I rely on in my role as mayor. Now, I might appear to be standing here alone this evening, but work that needs to be done is something that I alone cannot do. I am deeply grateful for the amazing chief administrators and lady leaders in city manager Elizabeth Pauley and utility director Jackie Flowers, who oversee the hard day-to-day -day work of our city and utility departments. I'd also like to thank every one of the nearly 4,000 employees here at the city that carry out essential work and provide vital services every single day. In addition to city staff, I'm deeply honored to recognize my passionate and hardworking fellow council members. I feel exceptionally fortunate to serve alongside these eight talented peers. Recently re-elected Catherine Ushka, who is serving this year as my deputy mayor, seasoned council members Keith Blocker, John Hines, Connor McCarthy, and Christina Walker, who have faithfully provided leadership and guidance through the COVID-19 pandemic, and newly elected council members Joe Bushnell, Kiara Daniels, and Sarah Rumbar, who are eager to lead and make a difference in our community. 
Previously speaking of lady leaders, we historically have, for the first time, a majority of five women on the Tacoma City Council, and that's something to celebrate. Now, while we don't have all of the history, we also believe that now that the city is represented by four people of color, this may also be a first for the city of Tacoma. Now, while I may be one of nine votes, I strongly and personally feel the sole responsibility that you have entrusted by re-electing me to a second term as your mayor. As I've alluded to, this year's theme is stronger. Many voices, one community. You know, you can't wish strength into being. You've got to build it. And over the past couple years, we have built a lot of strength, but there is still so much to do. In 2021, we saw more historic difficulty and complexity in the issues before us. Whether it was grappling with the Delta variant, the ongoing response to calls for social, racial, and climate justice, or the increased polarization in the voices heard across the community and our nation. The year asked so much of us as individuals and as an organization. But despite the increased weight that 2021 asked us to bear, we have made strides on a number of issues and city, and city staff continued to provide vital services. Each one of these contributions was important and valued. And that remains true even while many pressing and highly visible issues remain before us. As I mentioned, there are many issues of urgency facing the city, like graffiti removal, potholes, infrastructure investments, zoning and land use, fire services, crime response, tree planting, sister cities, Tacoma venue and events, utilities like water, power, rail, and solid waste, how to connect to your council members, our new climate action plan, or the more than one million pounds of litter and trash that we have picked up. Wow. Now, that's just the list I could think of in this very moment. And trust me, I would love to cover all of them tonight. But I didn't think you wanted to be here for 60 days, so I'm limiting it to the issues that I can keep you for just 60 minutes. For specifics on countless city issues and pressing topics that we cannot cover today, you can find the latest at cityoftacoma.org. Now tonight, in addition to the anti-racist transformation efforts that span every aspect of our work, I will speak to public safety and violent crime, our continued recovery from COVID, and affordable housing and homelessness. But before we dive into these weighty topics, I want to open with a fun annual State of the City tradition, the announcement of this year's Tacoma Reads selections. Tacoma Reads is the City of Tacoma's annual partnership with the Tacoma Public Library. Together, we invite the city to explore themes relevant to all of us by reading common books, attending programs and events, and engaging in discussion. The upcoming cycle of Tacoma Reads will focus on themes of hope, resilience, and building community. Now, if you're viewing this as a part of a watch party, or even if you're at home alone, Now's your time to get engaged, and it's a great time for that impromptu drum roll, please. And our kids and family title is a Caldecott Honor, a New York Times Editor Choice, and a Junior Library Guild Selection. It's Thank You, Amu, by Oge More. This beautiful picture book illustrates the concepts of generosity and care for one's community. Our youth selection is We Belong by Cookie Hip Hipponia Everman. We Belong is an immigrant story of resiliency with elements of Filipino folklore woven throughout. 
And finally, if I can get that drum roll again, I'm excited to announce that our main title this year will be a selection penned by a trailblazing Latine author who wrote the beloved novels, How the Garcia Girls Lost Their Accents, and In the Time of the Butterflies. The selection is Afterlife by Julia Alvarez, a novel that asks the meaningful question, how do we live in a broken world without losing faith in one another or ourselves? While Tacoma Reads brings us important opportunities to come together in conversation, to share our experience and learnings, and to get to know our neighbors, I want to spend a good portion of our time tonight addressing the issues that demand serious solutions, starting with public safety. Between 2020 and 2021, we saw startling increases in some very visible and impactful crime. Our city was shaken by 31 homicides each year. Vandalism and property destruction were up 15%. We saw a year-over-year -year increase of nearly 20% in assaults. Motor vehicle thefts were up 66%. And we saw an increase of more than 85% in arson, making this by far the highest on record in the last five years. And we know that everyone is feeling the effects of these crimes. As crime continues to increase, the department is hovering at approximately 50 vacancies out of a 364 fully funded commissioned police positions. To put this into perspective, our police department has historically seen a 4% vacancy rate. And what we're seeing now is an unprecedented 14%. Now, while acknowledging that nationwide increases in violent crimes and the dedicated efforts of our police department to prevent and solve crimes, when it comes to this issue, the state of our city is unacceptable. We can, we must, and more importantly, we will do better. While rising crime rates may be grim, we have been taking steps to address this issue. And I would like to take this time to express my sincerest gratitude to our police officers who are our first responders. They meet people in some of the most challenging moments of their lives. In addition to that, we have a new leader in Chief Avery Moore, who joined the department in late January and is already applying his passion and experience to making positive change while working to support and uplift Tacoma's police officers and our entire community. While Chief Moore takes a comprehensive look at the department, he has already begun working on the issues of highest concern. Building upon the department's previous efforts to address street racing, he initiated coordinated emphasis missions with regional law enforcement partners, and we have already seen positive progress from this committed and collaborative effort. Now, this is just one of many public safety issues. And while we work with Chief Moore to build a more comprehensive strategy to address crime and restore a sense of safety to all of Tacoma's beloved neighborhoods, immediate steps are still being taken. Just last month, the City Council and I worked with staff to identify America Rescue Plan Act dollars that will be used for short-term solutions that mitigate the impacts of increased crime, including temporary private security enhancements for business districts, and window replacement fund to help businesses with the cost of vandalism. While we implement these short-term measures, the City Council and I will continue working hard with until all members of our community feel safe. Touching on the theme of this speech, as your elected leaders, we hear many voices but they all have different perspectives on what it means to feel safe. In addition to addressing increases in crime, our police department is working hard to transform how it operates. 
We continue to implement the 163 recommendations from studies conducted in the last two years and are adapting our policies and practices to new state law. Following the alternative response study, we are reassessing the way we address homelessness, mental health, and behavioral health calls. And in addition to body cameras, we used federal dollars to purchase dash cameras to increase our efforts to become fully transparent. For a full overview of our transformation efforts over the last two years, we now have an interactive transformational timeline that can be found at cityoftacoma.org slash transformation. Since the state of the city in regards to public safety is unacceptable, then clearly we must continue to take long-term sustainable action. First, we cannot keep our community safe without police. They are a part of the solution. We are working diligently to fill the approximately 50 full funded positions in our current budget, bringing us back to the 364 positions within our department. These efforts include recruiting and hiring police staff that mirror our community and have a strong drive towards service. This is an issue faced by communities across our region, state, and nation. And our solutions need to be tailored to this competitive hiring environment. That's why just last week, the council and I approved hiring incentives for experienced lateral officers who have already completed the basic academy training and can move into active patrol roughly six months faster than new recruits. And tonight, I have the proud honor to announce a new Tacoma Police Department initiative, Reflect and Protect, a recruitment effort to attract new officers who reflect Tacoma and officers who will protect Tacoma. Now, if you feel drawn to service, you can visit reflectandprotect.org to read a message from our new chief, learn more about the pay and benefits and the values of the Tacoma Police Department. Filling these vacancies will increase financial efficiencies by lowering officer overtime and preventing our current officers from experiencing burnout. Chief Moore has already begun working on long-range planning that is informed by data and specific evidence-based tools. Be sure to tune into our study session on April 19th at noon, where you will learn more from the team of experts that Chief Moore has assembled to review and analyze available crime data to forge new solutions. Enhanced with stakeholder input and perspectives, this will allow Chief Moore to develop a nuanced strategy for Tacoma using proven violent crime reduction strategies designed to avoid over-policing and increase perceptions of safety for our whole community. Now tonight, I have another announcement that relates to both the important issue of public safety as well as the city's commitment to anti-racist systems transformation with a priority first on policing. It is no secret, as I said earlier, that safety means different things to different people. And putting more police on the street alone doesn't result in an increased sense of safety for everyone in our city. This year, we will be launching Tacoma's Police Community Reconciliation Work. Reconciliation will engage our communities and law enforcement in activating the, reconcili framework, the reconciliation framework designed and tested by the National Network for Safe Communities, or NNSC, at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Intended outcomes for this process include a Tacoma-specific vision and a new path to public safety informed by a recognition of past and present harm. Stronger working relationships between the community and the police. Increased community confidence in public safety. Specific and concrete acts of repair. Fewer homicides and acts of serious violence. Higher crime solvability rates 
and new and revised policies that better serve impacted communities. This work is funded by a generous grant from Microsoft. In this framework, the city will begin with an acknowledgement of harm that we, the city, as an institution, have caused. Now, yes, you have shared your feedback with us before, and you might ask, how will this time be different? We will build on the work by Project Peace, the community's public police advisory committee, and Heal the Heart, as well as the perspectives and experiences that have been shared in the past and the present. Through this ongoing restorative work of understanding, acknowledging, and repairing institutional harm, we will engage people who have, been, who have been historically marginalized by public safety systems to lead in reshaping them. By building on Tacoma's existing work while adding new elements, especially historic research, this framework will serve as a scaffolding to build and support our other efforts. Now, Chief Moore said in his interview that at the root of policing, there must be love. By listening and leading with empathy in this important work of reconciliation, we will ensure our success in addressing crime while keeping love at the foundation of the work. The issues that we are facing with crime and policing impact many areas of our community, including the health of our economy. Before I jump in on how we're supporting our businesses and workforce, I do want to take this moment to thank our first responders, our healthcare employees, our frontline workers for helping us navigate this pandemic and continue to recognize that and continue to recognize those lives that have been taken and have been forever changed by COVID-19. I know that some of you are tired of talking about COVID-19 and its effects, and trust me, I am too. However, we cannot talk about the future without acknowledging the impact of the pandemic in our community. Our grit city businesses are spending money to address issues like vandalism while showing their moxie and standing strong against the financial impacts of COVID-19. For our businesses, as the pandemic eases, the difficulties they have faced continue to mount. Some are facing back rent and utilities as moratoriums have been lifted. Supply chains and price increases have complicated the operations of nearly every business. And across many industries, employers are struggling to find and keep a stable workforce. There are acute difficulties finding and keeping workers in minimum wage jobs where the bulk of turnover takes place. While unemployment in Tacoma continues to hover around a low 4%, you might be surprised to know that at the same time, we have over 15,000 eligible workers currently unemployed. The disconnect between employers and what employers are offering and what workers are seeking is multifaceted. Factors like living wages and the high cost of living, flexibility to work remotely, and lack of affordable and reliable childcare. They are just a few of the many key contributors to the workforce shortage. We are seeing more and more businesses step up and adapt to employees' needs. And as that continues, we will start to see greater stabilization of the workforce. Now, it won't fully occur without direct investments, communities' commitment to local businesses, and the elimination of barriers for individuals working in Tacoma while caring for their families. In response to the economic impacts of COVID, the city provided 450 loans and grants, totaling over $7 million to support the stabilization and recovery of small businesses and jobs in Tacoma, with 54% going to black, indigenous, and people of color owned businesses and organizations. The city has also worked to strengthen and diversify the local economy by aligning its goals with the Economic Development Strategic Plan, Equity and Contracting Program, and the Racial Equity Action Plan. 
You see, we know that Black-owned businesses are disproportionately underrepresented when decisions are being made that directly impact Black entrepreneurial success. Due to some of our preliminary findings on Black and other minority-owned businesses' disparities, we have been strategic about listening to the voice of the customer and community through partner-led BIPOC roundtable discussions and assessments. Culturally relevant and, ta and tailored technical assistance will help small businesses survive the economic impacts of COVID-19 by better understanding and leveraging access to the expansive web of resources available across the region. We are extremely fortunate to have the Washington Business Center of the Minority Business Development Ag Agency, or Tacoma MBDA for short, operating right here. Out of 38 MBDA businesses centers in the nation, only two of them are operated by a city. And I am so proud that the city of Tacoma is one of those very rare models. In addition to being recognized for its excellence, the Secretary of Commerce recently visited our region and personally informed us that the Tacoma MBDA Business Center was awarded $2 million in funding that will ensure its continued operations through 2026. Now, many of you may know that the global maritime or ocean economy is expected to double by 2030 and becoming a $3 trillion industry. We are working to ensure that a diverse range of business owners are able to gain from this growth right here locally. Washington State's maritime economy is uniquely poised to assert itself as a global leader in innovation and sustainability, and we want Tacoma to be at the forefront of this work. That's why the city and Washington Maritime Blue partnered to open the Tacoma Maritime Innovation Incubator in 2021. Based out of the Center for Urban Waters, this incubator is supporting seven diverse firms, helping them to grow and refine their product and services so that they will contribute to the economy growing in the South Sound. For both employers and workers, a focus on jobs and workforce development will be crucial in the coming year. In 2022, we can expect to see more continued investment in alternative pathways. One such program is the Introduction to Healthcare Apprenticeship Pathways pilot, conducted in partnership with Workforce Central and the Tacoma Housing Authority. Prioritizing recruitment from Tacoma Housing Authority residents, it will train 40 Tacoma residents through a seven-week program that will provide a certified nursing assistant certification and options to enter entry-level positions or transition to an apprenticeship position as they continue their education. Everyone enrolled in this program will receive full wraparound services during the training and for up to six months after the program, including a weekly cash stipend. The pilot will also engage a community-based facilitation group to develop ongoing, meaningful co-design and dialogue to inform workforce development efforts for this pilot and across other sectors moving forward. Adding training and support for women and people of color to be better represented in the alternative pathways in the skilled trades is also a driving priority for 2022. We know from talking to young people in our schools that the interest in these pathways is far more diverse than the current reality reflects. This will be a year of rejuvenation and growth for our workforce and the city of Tacoma's and the city of Tacoma is championing these efforts every step of the way. As a member of the Workforce Central Executive Board, I am so grateful to CEO Katie Condon for her leadership and partnership in these very efforts. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> now, over the years, we've worked to strengthen our local, regional, and national economic development partnerships to ensure our continued success. This includes regular tele-roundtable discussions with the Economic Development Board, the Tacoma Pierce County Chamber, 
and Greater Seattle Partners. We have also worked with Tacoma's neighborhood business districts and the Downtown Tacoma Partnerships, as well as a number of Tacoma's small businesses to gather detailed information on how they are being impacted by COVID-19 and how we can best support them. By listening to the many voices of the business community, these partnerships will inform and ensure that we are stronger going forward. In addition to assisting and supporting businesses as we emerge from the pandemic, we are proactively positioning ourselves to diversify our economy through efforts like the proposed 5G project in the Tide Flats and developing our green economy work to decarbonize and address climate change. We are accepting applications and proposals for this work through March 29th. We are a city of entrepreneurs, creatives, and makers. We are innovating to ensure that all businesses have access to the resources they need to maximize their growth in this time of change. We are investing in the technologies and the clean power of the future, and we are poised for ascendance in this post-pandemic recovery. We've talked a lot about public safety and the health of our economy this evening, two key issues for Tacoma's continued vitality and quality of life. Also key is the way we address the issue of homelessness and housing. There is no data point needed to punctuate the fact that we are in a visible crisis of public health and personal dignity. We don't need to wait for the 2020 point in time count numbers to know that effectively addressing homelessness must remain a top priority. We must do more to address the staggering scale of the crisis and level of need. Now, COVID-19 has exacerbated this issue by increasing family instability and reducing the capacity of shelters and the number of beds they can provide while safely distancing guests. Increasing pressures on the housing market have impacted us all as well. At the same time, discussion around how to address homelessness can be polarizing. Oftentimes, advocates, funders, service providers, business owners, and people with or without shelter can think about solutions to homelessness differently, further complicating our efforts to effectively serve our most vulnerable population. No matter what your perspective, at the root of it is people. People of all ages deserve the opportunity to grow up and grow old here in the city of Tacoma. And they should be able to do so in a way that protects their health and their dignity. In three years since Tacoma housing needs were identified as a part of the Affordable Housing Action Strategy, the city has experienced significant changes in its demographic and housing market conditions. I doubt that any of these will come as a surprise. Incomes have not kept up with housing costs. Low-income households are being priced out of the rental market. Special populations are disproportionately affected by poverty and are especially vulnerable to the changing housing market. The shortage of affordable rental units persists, especially for lower-income households. Racial and ethnic diversity has increased while, dis while desperate trends in home ownership and poverty remain. While housing attainability is just one of the many factors contributing to this complicated issue, that leads people into being without shelter. The real impacts of this data points on everyday issue that the real impacts of these data points on everyday lives is staggering. We are in a historically competitive housing market and those who might generally choose to own real estate are remaining in the rental market, sometimes taking up scarce units that would be affordable to many families making less money. Roughly 40% of Tacoma's residents are paying more than 30% of their income for housing costs, some well over that amount. We have learned in our work since declaring a state of emergency on this issue 
that there are no easy answers. In fact, we must address a vast network of interconnected root causes that contribute to homelessness. While it will not be fast or easy, we cannot tackle this issue alone. For our residents experiencing homelessness, we must, we will, and we are going to do more. Since the Affordable Housing Access Action Strategy was put into place, I am proud that we have made solid progress on all four of our, object of our objectives. Number one, we said we would provide more homes for more people. And we passed ordinance number 28798 to encourage the development of more housing by expanding the multifamily tax exemption. And in 2021, 289 units of affordable housing for those at or below 60% of the area medium income came onto line. Additionally, 57 units of permanent supportive housing are currently under construction. And finally, more than 480 units were provided funding for construction and are projected to be completed within two years. Number two, we declared a need to keep housing affordable and in good repair. And we preserved 141 units through single family rehab and city supported home repair projects. Number three, we committed to helping those people stay in their homes and communities. And we assisted more than 31,000 people through our landlord tenant program and utility and housing assistance. And finally, number four, we identified a need to reduce barriers for those who, were, who often encounter them. The city has provided 854 households with over 6 million in rental assistance and provided 1,800 households with over 2 million in utility assistance. And these are just examples of the vast work we are undertaking when it comes to affordable, attainable, and accessible housing. Our efforts to ensure that Tacoma has sufficient housing are rolling out rapidly when compared to other communities. And some of our programs are the most cutting edge in the state. We have also made strides to improve services and availability of shelter in our community, although it may not seem like it on our streets. The, city's now, the city now funds sh permanent shelter bed capacity of 648 beds. And with projects we have brought online in conjunction with our faith-based and nonprofit partners, we have added an additional 537 temporary and emergency shelter beds. As we continue to expand, the city is close to doubling our shelter capacity. In addition to increasing shelter beds, we are also working to improve our outreach. The city's Homeless Engagement and Alternatives Liaison, or HEAL team, performs ongoing encampment outreach to provide individuals opportunities to connect to shelter, behavioral health, substance use, and employment services. We know these services are essential, and we have doubled the size of that vital team and plan to expand it further. The city also funds a designated mental health co-responder to provide immediate support for individuals in crisis. Now we know that housing and homelessness are issues that spill across city lines. The importance of regional cooperation is why we are proud to be a part of establishing the new Aspen Court. By working innovatively with Pierce County, the city of Lakewood, the state of Washington, and the Low Income Housing Institute, we were able to provide funding for the acquisition of the former Comfort Inn and convert it to emergency shelter. 
Aspen Court is providing essential emergency shelter beds for up to 120 people for two years. And after that, the site will become much needed permanent supportive housing. Some of our friends, families, and neighbors are living with disabilities or fixed incomes that prevent them from achieving housing stability, particularly in a market as expensive as ours. Permanent supportive housing is vital for keeping a roof over the head of these community members. That's why it's so important. Despite the cost of building and maintaining permanent supportive housing, there is no effective plan to resolving homelessness without it. In addition to these efforts, we have also worked in collaboration with our counterparts at Pierce County and actively participated in the development of the county's 2021 comprehensive plan to end homelessness. Participation in this effort demonstrates the city's commitment to ensuring we are aligned closely with the work underway by our regional partners as we expand our own strategy. For the 2021-2022 biennium, we are investing nearly $28 million in housing and homelessness response services. Additionally, we have committed just over 12 million or 40% of our ARPA funding to address the issue of housing and homelessness. You see, we know that these substantial investments alone are not enough. To be fully transparent, the everyday impacts these conditions are already having on our friends, our families, and our neighbors can make our current efforts feel like too little, too late. Before I speak to how we will continue to address homelessness, I want to talk about how we are going upstream to ensure housing stability so that people are not forced to become homeless. Sustaining prevention programs such as the city's current supports on rental and utility assistance is key to this effort. The city remains committed to reducing racial disparities in our service delivery, and for this reason, we have a goal of providing at least 45% of this assistance to households headed by persons of color. Those who are behind on their utility payments should not wait for the moratorium to end on March 31st, but instead should apply now. Through 2022, we will also continue to provide mortgage assistance and foreclosure prevention counseling to eligible homeowners. We are making key investments to expand the number of affordable housing units. One example of this is the $1.9 million the City Council and I recently committed to the Tacoma Housing Authority mixed-use project that will create 230 units in the heart of Hilltop. These units will serve a population at or below 60% of the area medium income. The city's support was vital to making the project financially feasible, as it allows the project to best compete for the low-income housing tax credits and to leverage the private financing that is necessary for this project to move forward. For many Americans, home ownership is one of the most direct and efficient ways to increase net worth. And home ownership is essential for any family to maintain intergenerational wealth. That is why we are also taking action to advance equitable home ownership in 2022. We completed the disparity study on home ownership, and now we will set priorities and measure equity goals for the recommendations presented in the report. While addressing the root causes is necessary part of our strategy, it doesn't address those who are already unsheltered on the streets. In our work to develop thorough plans to address homelessness, specifically, we have listened to the advocates, the service providers, subject matter experts, and those experiencing homelessness. Loud and clear, we have heard that successful solutions will require addressing racial disparities in the homeless system, preventing homelessness before it begins, 
when it occurs, ensuring that individuals can easily access services and supports that treat them with dignity, ensuring access to affordable and supportive housing, and building capacity amongst providers and continuing to collaboration with our regional partners. We have scoured the nation for solutions. And let's be clear, no city has found the perfect solution. But we know these plans can be affected. Now, I still believe that we can be a national leader in how we take care of the most vulnerable in our community. We are working with everyone in all sectors to find innovative solutions that meet the unique needs of our community. Preparations are already underway to support one of those, uh, one of those innovations. One of those innovations is a training academy to increase the number of qualified shelter staff. We have learned that one of our barriers to addressing homelessness is a shortage in critical staff needed to help us with providing services. This program addresses the issue by providing an avenue for individuals who may have been homeless or may have experienced homelessness to establish professional skills and serve shelter residents in a matter that is trauma informed. This keeps the health and well being of all persons at the center of service delivery. It builds our provider workforce, lifts people out of economic uncertainty and ensures that those in our community who are experiencing homelessness have access in an, in an environment that best meets their needs. This is just one way we are walking the talk of our strategy to end homelessness. Now, while I am excited about the potential in this path forward, you don't have to be a foundation, a government, or a private company to make a difference. The people sleeping under tents, tarps, or makeshift, or makeshift structures are our neighbors, yours and mine. And they remain our neighbors, whether or not they are sheltered. Let's just be honest. One of the most difficult parts of this work is gaining support for new shelter sites. We have shown time and time Again, that managed sites like our tiny emergency micro shelters can live in harmony and connection with our surrounding neighbors. And I just want to stop for a moment and thank our neighborhood and community services staff under the leadership of Linda Stewart for the diligent work that they have put into setting these sites up for success. Establishing new shelter sites will always involve community conversations. If you want to support and strengthen our approach to homelessness, please advocate and support managed shelter sites. I want to remind us that this work, again, will neither be quick nor easy, but I'm committed to continuing to find solutions together this work requires many voices to be successful, and I'm counting on continuing to hear yours. Throughout tonight's address, you have heard that funding is, an essential, is essential for moving our plans into action. While my peers on the council and I have been elected to serve this city, it's not just our nine voices alone that make Tacoma stronger. Again, we cannot do this work without continuing to hear from you. This is a budget development year. And while we always seek community feedback, it is especially important to hear from you this year. We will be seeking guidance on how we approach the collective problems facing us and how we will leverage funding for success in the 2023 and 2024 cycle. This includes allocating over $30 million in ARPA funding. The budget is a statement of our shared values and how we allocate its dollars should further the common goals of our community. While addressing the pressing needs that we spoke of today, 
We still have to make sure that we are funding the basics, like stoplights, potholes, fire and police services, utility infrastructure, garbage collection, customer service counters, and additional services. In this year's budgeting process, we will be meeting you where you are, expanding our online engagement, going out to community, walking through how our city budget works, and building a better understanding of your priorities for the coming biennium. This year, we have an exciting and innovative opportunity to increase community involvement and influence and connect neighbors across Tacoma and within districts and create community leadership. Because it is the many voices in Tacoma that give strength to our one community, the City Council and I plan to allocate $5 million in ARPA funds for particip participatory budgeting projects. Participatory budgeting is a new innovative idea that is exactly as it sounds. It is a democratic process that is led by the community. Each district receives $1 million for community members to pitch ideas, turn those ideas into proposals, and then the entire community votes and selects projects for the city to fund and implement. Projects like activating green space with a community garden, installing a new public art piece, pedestrian safety and traffic calming measures, or adding park amenities are just some examples. We are rolling out participatory budgeting first in Council Districts 2 and 4, and look for more information to be shared soon. As I close, I want to acknowledge that speaking up doesn't always feel safe. In this time, when having a different opinion has been weaponized, I challenge everyone tonight to embrace a different paradigm of strength and success, where many voices in our community must be factored in, as we continue to strategize on the most innovative and sustainable long-term solutions for the issues facing our one community. Whether it is calling on your elected leaders, participating in the budget process, being an active member of your neighborhood council, calling attention to the needs of a neighbor, or attending community meetings. We continue to need your voice and your action to build a brighter and better tomorrow. As you raise your voice, I want to make sure that you have everything you need to enter conversations fully informed. While COVID-19 may have initially made it difficult for us to stay connected, those times have passed. Tonight, I will renew my ongoing commitment to address Tacoma's most pressing needs while being visible, vulnerable, and real with you on the issues that lie before us. As a part of this work, I am announcing tonight the relaunch of Inside Tacoma a TV Tacoma program that connects how local, state, and federal policies inform the way our city works. To clearly show how policymakers and administrators work to create change, the city manager and I will be joined in these conversations by leaders like our police chief, city directors, and local elected officials as we keep you up to date on our progress. Our theme tonight has been stronger, many voices, one community. When I speak of many voices, I'm hearkened to my experience of being a choir director. Many voices can sound beautiful in unison, but the range of what singing in unison offers, offers can sometimes be limited. Many of the most beautiful songs are more complex fluctuating between solos and duets, harmonies of singers sharing different notes. And it can be fun to bounce through songs of triumph and praise or marches. To explore the full meaningful range of music, 
We also need the sadness and the tension and the despair of the minor chords. This is not an easy time that we are in. The challenges facing us are critical, and yes, they are urgent. While there may be days our challenges seem insurmountable, my peers on the city council and I continue to show up, serve you, and drive progress with tenacity and strength. In these trying times, I have never had more hope because you continue to participate and show up. While we, as your leaders, hear cries for help, we also hear cries from the helpers stepping up to ask how they can contribute. We hear you, we are here for you, and we are determined to see Tacoma shine at its brightest. As I reflect on our shared community history, I am reminded that Tacoma is no stranger to challenges. In fact, we have demonstrated time and time again that when we rise with strength to meet the challenge with transformational force, we are successful. The many voices that make up our one community are not just the voices of today. They are also the voices of tomorrow. You see, we all stand on the shoulders of giants, our parents, our grandparents, our teachers, community leaders, activists and mentors like mine, the late Harold G. Moss and Dr. Dolores Silas. Across generations, there are so many who worked so hard to realize Tacoma's potential. Just as we today stand fortified with their past contributions, I, as your mayor, the members of the city council, and each one of you must continue to build that same muscle. I challenge each of us to become giants for the generations to come. And I assure you that our shoulders are more than strong enough for Tacoma's future to stand on. I have outlined tonight just some of the many ways I am working for you with my council colleagues to meet the challenges of public safety, COVID recovery, attainable housing, and homelessness. I shared our commitment to improve our ability to fight crime while transforming policing. I spoke to affordable housing units we expect to bring online in the months ahead and those we've prevented from being displaced. And I announced our work to grow living wage jobs while addressing homelessness through innovative workforce development strategies. Now, while tonight's speech didn't include a lot of flashy promises that we could easily and immediately solve the pressing issues facing our community, I delivered what I vowed I would do in my opening, a candid talk about what is before us and our path forward. While I have said many times tonight that the solutions are neither straightforward or quick, together, I know we will continue to press in the direction of progress in our work to uplift, protect, shelter, and support every member of our community. And no matter how difficult it gets, I promise to continue showing up daily committed with strength, with the strength needed to address these issues. And Tacoma, as we move through this next year together, remember, stronger, many voices, one community. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Woodards, for sharing the current state of this fine city 
and focusing on how we are and can continue to move forward. I know we will all leave this evening feeling inspired to be part of making Tacoma stronger together. As we close out this evening, we will once again be joined by the choir from the Congregational Christian Church of American Samoa singing Soar Like an Eagle in their native tongue. Thank you to everyone who participated in tonight's presentation and to Tara for co-emceeing this event. And finally, thank you for joining us tonight.